Welcome everybody, my name's Chris. This is the uh, third off-road workshop that uh, we've put on. And uh, tonight we're gonna talk about guide to sleeping outside. And really it's all about how to get a fantastic night's sleep um, in this whole kind of overland, four-wheel drive touring, off-road camping space. Sleep is so important. Uh, if you're not getting a good night's sleep, you're gonna be grumpy, you're gonna have a bad attitude, Nobody's gonna to wanna to be around you, and you're not gonna have fun. So if you get a good night's sleep, you're gonna be refreshed, you're gonna be alert, you're gonna have a good time, and your friends won't hate you as much. So sleeping is super important. Um, all right, I'm gonna go over just, uh, kinda of go, go over some kind of three sort of key areas. So I'm gonna talk about just some general considerations first. You know, um, things that you need to be thinking about. Uh, I'm gonna go over, um, really the next point is just all about comfort. Comfort, comfort, comfort. If you focus on comfort, um, and the last thing I'm gonna talk about convenience, because that's kind of a, a thing. And then we're gonna take all of those things and we're gonna wrap them up into the different types of systems that are out there and different ways you can go about having these, uh, a good night's sleep based on all the previous things we've talked about. So, first of all, you gotta think about what type of travel or camping you're doing. So are you, heading out to your favorite uh, fishing hole and setting up on it and just have, creating base camp, or you're going out to your favorite mountain biking spot, your favorite kayaking spot, whatever, you're going to your favorite place to camp and you're just gonna set up base camp and you're just gonna hang out there for a few days. Or are you gonna get a little bit more uh, touring under your belt and you're gonna just sort of, you know, every night is a new camp spot, right? So these kind of things to think about, the type of travel you're gonna be doing is really gonna determine whether or not Setting up camp every night is gonna be a pain in the rear or a breeze, and that will also affect your sleep. Uh, so consider also the climate that you're going to, the season that you're gonna be camping in. If it's cold, wet, and rainy, you know, in the spring in Oregon, and you're gonna go camp out in the coast range, it's probably gonna be cold, wet, and rainy. So prepare for that, have a sleep system for that, uh, so you can ensure you get a nice, warm, cozy, dry sleep. Um, otherwise, you're gonna be miserable. Uh, same thing if it's going to be super hot and you're heading out to the desert um, or up in the mountains and you know it could be a little snowy or whatever. Think about the climate, wherever you're going, the time of year that it is. Do a bit of googling of uh, what the weather trends are, that kind of thing. Super important to consider that. All right, and then how many people are going to be in the sleeping arrangement? Are you traveling solo? Uh, is it you and a partner? Is it uh, a family with kiddos? Is it you and your pet? Whatever, you know, how many people need to sleep, right? So is it a two person tent? Is it a single swag like this? Whatever, consider that as part of your plan, right? That's kind of obvious. With, with kids, there's some certain considerations. Uh, if you've got some kiddos, uh, the key with kiddos is just make sure they're warm and cozy. Kind of a no brainer, but you know, it gets cold at night, you're, not, you're, you're sleeping out in the middle of nowhere. So just make sure they're warm and cozy. Uh, depending on their ages is going to kind of determine how much coziness they're going to need. If they're super little ones, you know, have them bring their favorite little stuffed animal or whatever to make them feel comfortable and whatever. But um, yeah, just make sure that they're warm and cozy. You know, are the kids going to sleep in their own kind of sleeping bag or you're going to have them cuddle up with you? My kiddos, uh, much better if they sleep in their own sleeping bag because uh, otherwise they're going to just kick me in the kidneys all night long and that's not fun because um, then I'm not sleeping. So <laughs> having them in their own sleeping bag is good for our family, but it, you know, it's, uh, it's different for that. But consider that. Uh, think of the type of vehicle that you have, right? Because you're gonna be camping out of this vehicle. Um, so the vehicle is gonna be playing a big role. You know, is it, are, we, are we gonna be sleeping in, on, around, whatever, right? Think about the vehicle setup. Um, think about, really important, the weight of whatever this sleep setup is gonna be different ways to sleep, like this cot mattress and a sleeping bag or a rooftop tent or whatever, are gonna have different weights and payloads that they're gonna um, you know, add to your vehicle. So you wanna consider the weight and where that weight is on the vehicle is super important because it's gonna determine how much stuff you can take with you and people uh, or not. And then also costs. Um, all this is gonna have some kind of cost financially. So it needs to be in your budget, it needs to be in your plan. It needs to be part of that um, discretionary fund 
uh, that makes sense. Um, and I always like to try to, to try to, if I'm going to make a purchase, to try, try to have something that's going to make sense kind of for the long term, because then you can kind of amortize that cost over, you know, longer time, get more use out of the dang thing. So comfort first, comfort, comfort, comfort. If you're not comfortable, if you're not warm or cool, depending on how you like to sleep, if you're not cozy, uh, if you're tossing and turning all night, uh, if, if, if just trying to get a, some shut eye is an absolute point of misery, then you're never gonna wanna go out camping because it's just gonna be horrible. So make sure that you and whoever you're traveling with in your immediate uh, effective area are comfy. So, um, you know, Oregon here, gets cool at night often. Uh, so just make sure you have a warm, dry, good night's sleep. And so there's kind of several ways to go about doing that. And let's talk about that. Uh, let's first talk about, in a little bit, I'm gonna go over like the different types of sleeping arrangements, but let's talk about just sort of some general technologies here. So a tent, right? Whether it's on the roof, on the ground, whatever. Tents basically serve three basic functions. It's, it's protection, right, from the elements. Uh, protection from wind, protection from bugs, uh, it's insulation. Um, insulation, you know, you know, most tents have like a kind of a double rain fly effect. So you've got a bit of an air gap that actually provides a bit of insulation. Um, and it's also going to be ventilation. Uh, so you can breathe in there. It's not going to generate a bunch of condensation. That's really all that a tent does. <clears throat> so depending on what type of tent, if you're going to go the tent route, uh, you want to make sure that it checks those three boxes. And believe it or not, not all tents out there will check those three boxes. Or some tents may not be as intuitive as others to really check those three boxes. Some tents may require you to have to do certain things to get there. A good example is basically just sort of any, any, any ground tent um, with a rain fly really needs to have a gap between the outer shell of the tent and the actual uh, rain fly itself. If that rain fly is touching the outer fabric of the, uh, the or sorry, the inner fabric, if it's touching, it's not creating that air gap. So condensation is more likely to wick through the fabrics. And also you're going to have, um, you've basically lost that kind of insulating breathable barrier of airflow. And so your ventilation is not going to be as good either. So you're going to have condensation building up, which is not good. The other thing is You've got, you got, you want to have a tent that's that's sort of rated for whatever type of seasons you're you're camping in. Do you have a three season tent? Is it a four season tent? Um, you know, is it something that's going to allow you to camp through literally all four seasons through the winter, through the rain, the snow, uh, or is it a more of a three season tent where it's you know spring, summer, fall, and you know probably not the best for the winter. Um, most tents are going to have some kind of rating on them that you know will tell you if it's a three or four season tent. Um, doesn't matter if it's you know backpacking tent, uh, whatever. It's they're going to communicate that in some form or fashion. Um, most car-based tents are going to be most of the time a four season. There are some three seasons out there. Um, the other thing to consider uh, when it comes to comfort is what type of sleeping arrangement do you have at home? What works at home? Uh, hopefully, the way you sleep at home, you've got pretty dialed, right? You're, you're getting a good night's sleep at home. So think about, okay, what type of pillow do I use? How, you know, what type, what type of uh, mattress do I prefer? Is it something firmer, some are something softer? Whatever that sort of secret formula of things that you have, an arrangement that you have at home, try to mimic that when you're out camping. And you're gonna have obviously some sacrifices, there's gonna be a little bit give or take here or there, but really if you can kind of make that a, a, a point to consider, um, you know, like if you sleep at home and you're one of those that sleeps on your side and you know you love having two pillows, bring two pillows with you camping. It doesn't have to be your home pillows, but have something that's gonna give you that similar height of support for your neck when you sleep on your side. Um, and that's another thing to consider is your sleeping position. Do you sleep on your back? Do you sleep on your side? Do you sleep on your stomach? Uh, hopefully you don't sleep standing up because that's weird. Um, but you know, what is your sleep position? How do you like to sleep? Um, are you someone that likes to toss and turn? 
Um, you know, if you're a back sleeper, you know, do you kind of sleep like a log or do you kind of spread out all over the place? Um, if you sleep on your side, you know, do you curl up into a ball or do you stay pretty kind of, you know, straight, whatever? Um, think about that sleeping position because that's going to also determine your bedding arrangement. Because if you're in one of those like really nice, spendy, fancy backpacking mummy bags, you're not going to be able to sprawl out and you know be sleeping in the way that you like to at home. So you may want to get something larger, like a big rectangle bag, or even consider like a quilt or set of sheets or something. So the way you sleep at home, try to mimic that when you're camping as best as possible. Um, all right, so we talked about the type of sleeper, what works for you at home. Um, let's talk about sleeping pads slash mattresses. So we're gonna go for, from effectively the ground up. With your sleeping pad um, or air mattress or whatever you're sleeping on, uh, it, again, its job is, is to really provide that, that comfort, that cushion, um, and also insulation. The ground is cold, the ground will suck the heat out of your body. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna be sleeping on the ground, get something that's got some insulation. Get something that is going to uh, take away the feel of every little rock and branch and bump. Um, there's lots of ways to go about it. I've learned through sleeping on just about every type of ground pad that something that is an air and foam combo is actually pretty dang good. Because two things, the, uh, a foam or like a memory foam, it gives you that sort of perfect contouring to your body and that bit of insulation and it kind of helps, you know, with a little bit of uh, R value. Uh, but then with the air side of it, that gives you that loft, which uh, also helps with, with um, you know, the, just insulating yourself. But you can also adjust the air pressure to get it absolutely perfect on, you know, the firmness or softness of your air mattress. Straight air mattresses that have no insulation or no foam in them are going to be noisy. Uh, they're really not going to have a whole lot of thermal barrier properties, you'll find that air mattresses tend to sleep pretty cold and you kind of roly-poly on them and you fall off of them pretty easily. So something, you know, something that has memory foam in it, but also air combo is really going to be best. Just a straight foam mattress uh, can, uh, you know, kind of lose its shape a bit. Uh, you can pack it out pretty easily. Um, and to get something that's thick enough, you usually have to, it's just, takes up a ton of space. So get as thick of a mattress as you can pack. Uh, that's a, a foam and air combo, sort of for the best of both worlds is, is generally what works. We're not, we're not lightweight backpacking here. So a lot of backpacking mattresses are just gonna be air. Some of them are starting to add a little bit of foam combo as well, but um, get something also that's wide, you know, cause we wanna be comfortable. This is car camping. Uh, we can afford a little bit more of a luxury in our sleeping arrangement. So make sure it's wide enough for you to accommodate how you sleep. Again, if you're, if you're a side sleeper, you know, something that's nice and wide that you can actually get on your side and curl up and, or if you'd like to sleep on your back and spread out, you just want room to do that. Nothing is more horrible than if you're laying on your back and your mattress is not wide enough and, and then your arms like fall off the sides and you're just like this all night. It's just like, ugh. So then you have to put them on up on here and you're just ugh, horrible. It's just not fun. Or if you're sleeping on your side and you're constantly you're like your knees, your legs are falling off or your shoulder slips off or your pillow falls off, it just gets super annoying and you're getting a horrible night's sleep. So don't do that. <laughs> not good. Um, so yeah, thick, wide, um, and gosh, a foam and air combo is just gonna be fantastic. That's honestly like, the best. Uh, and there's tons of uh, brands out there that offer that. Um, tons of ways you can go about it. They make them in, in singles and doubles. And I mean, you can get them as big and as small as whatever. So uh, good combo there. Uh, so next, let's talk about sleeping bags for a little bit. Your sleeping bag is the part that actually touches your body when you're sleeping. So you want the fabric to be something that's comfortable against your, your skin, uh, something that's not gonna be all itchy and annoying and obnoxious. Um, some people like the feel of like a nylon bag. Some people like the feel of, you know, a flannel bag. So again, kind of mimic whatever that, you know, your sleeping arrangement is at home. If you, 
if you like sleeping flannel sheets, then get a sleeping bag that's flannel lined because it's gonna give you that similar feel from home and that's gonna make it more comfortable and unconsciously you're just gonna feel much more at home when you're trying to go to sleep. Um, and again, for, for space and for room, you know, a big rectangle bag, bag's really nice because you can spread out and you, you can move in it. Uh, some of these big rectangle bags, uh, ours, you know, you can zip them together. If you've got a partner or kiddos or whatever, or you want to get cozy, um, you know, just think of, think of the, the layout of that sleeping bag. Uh, if you love mummy bags and that's your thing, then use a mummy bag for, uh, uh, for what it's worth. But a sleeping bag, you know, you want a shape that makes sense for how you sleep. You want, you want something that's going to provide loft, right? So it's not going to just be all packed down. It's going to, you know, have some fluff to it because lo the loft in the sleeping bag is what gives it its, its insulating properties. Uh, and depending, like, you know, what we talked about, the considerations of, of the season, where you're going, that kind of thing, you want to have a sleeping bag that's going to have a rating that accommodates the type of climate you're going to be in. And I won't go too deep into sleeping bag ratings. We can talk about it afterwards offline. There's a whole nother world of nonsense when it comes to the ratings of sleeping bags. Uh, there's a lot of marketing uh, in the ratings of sleeping bags. So we can talk about that offline. But um, another way to do it is a simple quilt and like a duvet cover or something like that. Um, really, really good comfy way to sleep even on a simple setup like a cot or in something like this. You know, you've got a mattress in there. You want to put a little bit of a cover on it so you're not sleeping directly on the mattress. Uh, and then like a nice, you know, like puffy down quilt or something. Or, or gosh, even a similar blanket that you have from home, but just maybe like a smaller version. Um, yeah, you can absolutely bring some old, you know, some bed sheets, uh, a couple blankets, whatever, and make just a comfortable bed. Um, you can even make that into a bed roll so you can just roll it up and make it a simple setup. It's something that you could leave in a tent. It's something that you could pack into the back of your car if you've got a sleeping platform in the back of the vehicle. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm, all, I'm all for, again, trying to, trying to mimic exactly how you're sleeping at home as best as possible. It's the best way to get a good night's sleep. All right, what's next? We've got our mattress. We've got our sleeping bag or whatever sort of sheet and blanket combo next to his pillows, right? So uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but think about how you have your pillow arrangement at home. Is your pillow arrangement um, a really kind of packed out, you know, small, low profile pillow, or is it something that's really puffy? Do you like having a down pillow or a synthetic pillow? Um, try to figure out that combination of, of material of, of thickness um, and also something that, that works with how you sleep because you want to try to mimic that, again, out camping. So pillows are going to be a lot like air mattresses in that you can get straight air pillows and they're generally horrible because you constantly have to, you know, screw around with the, with the, you know, the pressure of the air to get it right. If you change your sleeping position, you know, it's either going to be too stiff or too soft. They, squirt out from underneath your head all the time. They just, they don't stay put. Um, again, a, a pillow that's foam with an inflation coefficient in there as well, I think it's gonna be the best of both worlds because that foam is gonna contour and, and feel nice to you and then the air gives you a bit of control over the volume. Or just bring your dang pillow from home or another version of what you have from home. But try to have that good head support to, to allow you to sleep in that position. I've, I've used just about every little camp pillow that's out there and they're all just horrible. You're constantly just having to fight it all night. Some people are just like, oh, I'll just roll up an old jacket or a sweatshirt and just sleep on that. Well, it's like, well, that's not how you sleep at home. So you're gonna, you're not gonna get a great night's sleep. Trust me, it's gonna be horrible. So have a good pillow. Um, and the last thing kind of all of it combined together is gonna be temperature management. So, whether you're someone that just loves to be just buried in blankets and get sleep really warm and cozy, or you're someone that just, you know, I just need a bed sheet and that's it. I sleep hot, I just want airflow, I want to have breathability. Make sure you can, you've got a sleeping setup that you can regulate that temperature a bit. So uh, if it's a, if you're doing a sleeping bag thing, um, sleeping bags are really only the way you can regulate temperature is just like pull it back off of you. That, that's why I really like, you know, if you can bring bed sheets and a blanket, because then you can just sort of peel layers away or add layers 
um, as you need, uh, depending on the temperature of the evening. So think about managing that, that temperature to get it to where you like to sleep. Let's keep charging forward. That was enough on comfort. You guys kind of have the point. Focus on comfort. All right, uh, convenience. So we've talked about a lot of stuff. All right, you're like, Chris, this all sounds well and good, but you just described something that's gonna take me three and a half hours to set up every night. And that sounds not very convenient. I agree with you. So convenience is another variable that we need to think, think about. So, um, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're camping, you're going on a fun trip, uh, you want it to be a fun experience. Um, if you're not retired, you're gonna be using vacation time to go out and do this. So, you know, you're on vacation, so make it a fun experience. Things that can detract from the experience are just more chores. Uh, setting up camp. If setting up camp, I've talked about this thousands of times, but if setting up camp is just an absolute point of misery and just takes forever and is just an absolute pain in the neck, uh, then you're just, it's ruining the camping experience. It's, you know, you're taking forever and it's raining out and you're just like, oh, I hate this, why do I do this, blah, blah, and you're just not gonna do it again. So um, with whatever setup you end up doing, make it as quick and as efficient to set up as possible uh, so it's not as much of a chore, so that way you can get into bed and lights out as quickly as possible if you need to. So quick and easy. Um, does your camping setup, your tent or your sleeping arrangement, does it provide uh, the amount of livable space needed uh, to be comfortable, right? So, you know, something like this, I mean, is this something that's gonna drive you nuts because you can't stand up and get changed in the morning? Uh, or is this something that, you know what, I'm fine with because this is very low profile, it's kind of basic, or do you want to just sleep out under the stars and you don't care, or do you need a nice enclosed space uh, to really kind of be cozy and comfortable and have room to be comfortable, right? So think of the livable space that you're going to want and kind of are comfortable with, and that's going to kind of steer your sleeping choice. Um, also. Again, we mentioned it earlier, uh, but shelter from the elements. Um, sleeping out underneath the stars, and let's say a rain squall comes in in the middle of the night, you're now soaking wet uh, with you know, that kind of setup. But there's other ways to go about it to where you can be a bit in some shelter, get out of the wind, get out of the rain, away from the mosquitoes, whatever, uh, but you're out of the elements and you're, you're staying dry. And also, um, kind of back to you know, the type of camping that you're doing, are you in like a big, you know, big campground where you got some neighbors? You may not want to sleep out under the stars because you may have some drunken idiot come stumbling through your camp at two in the morning and puke his brains out all over your sleeping bag in your lap, and that's fun to wake up to. Uh, <laughs> or are you out in the middle of nowhere and it's just it's just you and the coyotes, all right? So you know, or whatever. So privacy is not as much of a thing. So think about again where <laughs> where you're camping. Do I want to wake up with puke in my lap at two in the morning or do I care, right? So think about that. Um, that's a thing, like that is a thing. I, I've actually had somebody barfing their brains out at two in the morning on the inside of my tent, thankfully, but it was all on the side of my tent, about this far from my head. I'm just like, all right, he's still going. Oh, oh, one more. Oh, there, he got the last chunk out. Okay, good. Um, and it was just like, it was just horrible. And it's like, I'm not getting a good night's sleep now because I'm smelling everything he just ate for dinner along with all the beer he drank and the tequila that he mixed it with uh, and the wine coolers he had to finish it all off. And it's all now on the side of my tent. Yay, me. So <laughs> think about your sleeping arrangement and where you're camping to be comfortable. Because again, that wasn't comfortable. Uh, nobody likes that. Okay. So we've talked about a lot of just sort of foundational things to think about, right? Being warm, being comfortable, your space, the type of camping, your experience, all of that. That's now all gonna kind of tie together now in this portion. So let's talk about different ways to achieve this based on whatever kind of setup you got going on. So let's talk about sleeping in the vehicle. This is an option, right? If you're not seven feet tall, you can fold down the back seats or take out the back seats of any kind of SUV, CUV, whatever, uh, or a pickup and make a sleeping platform and just sleep on that inside the vehicle. Quick and easy, right? You just put it in the park. You know, hopefully you, you know, you got 
room and space and you can just lights out. Yeah. All right. So easy way to get a, a good night's sleep. Uh, but with any vehicle, again, ventilation, uh, vehicles aren't the greatest thing at ventilation. So if you do like sleeping in your vehicle, uh, have the ability to crack a window. So like on the Subaru here, it's got these goofy looking window visors. I've got them on my 4Runner. They look totally awesome and super high speed and definitely increase your overland score. But you know what's awesome about them is I can crack that window a bit. And if it's pouring down rain, I still got ventilation. So as goofy as they look, if you sleep in your rig, crack that window. Otherwise you're gonna wake up and it's just gonna be a swamp inside your truck from all your condensation from your breathing. Unless you stopped breathing, then you've got other issues. But um, breathing is usually how you wake up in the morning. So you wanna have ventilation uh, in the vehicle. Uh, also vehicles aren't the best insulated thing. It's kind of in a, you're in a steel or aluminum box. Uh, you know, the Subaru is more aluminum and plastic than it is steel. Um, you know, those aren't good insulating things. So again, have a good insulating pad, right? To get you that, that barrier, that's that sleep cushion, that, um, that just level of insulation and comfort that you can have. So sleeping in the vehicle is absolutely doable. It's super easy. It doesn't require a whole lot of anything. Um, I've seen some people just do some super basic, just platforms in the back, you know, where they, they're like, look, we don't use the back seat. It's just two of us that travel, or maybe it's three of us and they do like a split or whatever. The inside of a rig is such a good way to sleep. And there's, there's easy ways to do about that without having to spend a whole lot of money. You just throw your stuff in there and you're done with it. Uh, sleeping under the stars is kind of an obvious one, but, uh, if you're going to do it, um, be pretty dang sure about the weather, where you're gonna be at. Um, definitely don't be camping in that campground next to the drunks, cause that's not gonna be fun. Um, and I like sleeping under the stars a ton. I'll often just have this set up here on, on a cot with the mattress because uh, you know, Princess and the Pea, I gotta have it just right. Um, you know, if it's a questionable evening, I'll maybe set up the awning and just, I just have that set up just under the awning here, right? So I've got good open airflow, I'm off the ground. Um, you know, it's when I get up in the morning, I'm in a seating position so instead of having to crawl off the ground, just a little bit more comfortable and it's nice, you know, um, but you are on display for all of your friends and travelers that you went with. So, uh, if your comfort level is not there, then that might not be a good fit for you. Another option we set up over here in the corner, it's hard to see here, but on the other side of the Subaru, we set up one of, uh, one of our awning rooms on an awning. So, so that's something that you could transform into a sleeping arrangement that that's can be fully enclosed with good vehicle access. Um, but you know, sleeping under the stars, a simple pad bag or cot, something like that is a good way to go about it. Uh, especially if you're, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, because it's kind of special because man, those stars out in the middle of the desert, you can just see forever. And it's just gorgeous. That's a great setup that with an awning on a cot. Like I said, that's, that's one of my go-tos. If it's just me traveling with my buddies, just, right underneath the awning, simple, easy, um, in decent weather, right? If it's, if the weather looks questionable, then probably not a good choice. Um, another one is just, a, just a good old fashioned ground tent. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, obviously with a ground tent, you want to find, you have to find a nice flat piece of ground that doesn't have a bunch of sticks and rocks and holes and nonsense. Um, but you know, bring a little ground tent. It could be a little backpacking tent. It could be something a little bit more fancy, like a swag. Um, you know, having a ground tent is a great way to sleep, um, out in the back country. You know, these swags are great cause they come with the mattresses. You can leave your sleeping bag in them and you can roll the whole dang thing up into a big duffel bag. So when you get to camp, you just take it out of the duffel bag, unroll it, boom, everything's in there. Your sleeping bag's already in there. You're in, you're in the sack and out. A swag is, is more of an Aussie term. Um, you know, back in the old West days, this is more of like considered like a, a you know, cowboys would just use like a general bedroll. Uh, the Aussies stepped up the game one more notch because in Australia, they have a lot more creepy crawlies that want to kill you. Uh, here, even with our scorpions, tarantulas and rattlesnakes, those things don't want to kill you as much as all the things in Australia want to kill you. So the Australians, they use their tent, it's hotter than snot there, uh, and they use their tent to keep out the creepy crawlies. They have a lot of nasty things that really want to bite your face off or inject some kind of poisonous whatever, especially their spiders there, they're the worst. So the swag 
is that bedroll with a tent. So the idea is small, compact to an extent, um, where everything's still in one bedroll. So when you set up, it's just roll it all out, pull, pull, done. Your sleeping bag is in there, the mattress is in there. Everything can come out, right? So if you need to air things out and move things around, you can. It's full canvas, so you can batten down the hatches. And these are actually a four season tent. You can, if you season your canvas properly, you can be dry as a bone in that thing in the worst rain ever. Uh, or you can open this whole thing up. It's got you know mesh both sides and at the head and the foot. If it's a hot summer night and get some nice airflow. Uh, the swags all have a PVC bottom, so it's super waterproof kind of a tub, right? Trucker tarp is, is that same kind of material. So really uh, waterproof bottom. Um, so you can go right onto the ground if you like. Um, this is kind of the way I like using a swag is just on a cot because getting up in the morning is a lot easier when you're in a sitting position. It's more comfortable. And they also have a boot bag that's waterproof. You can throw your shoes in there and your boots and zip it closed and keep the creepy crawlies from getting in your boots. And also from your boots getting absolutely drenched. But it's tiny in there. So if you're someone that's a bit claustrophobic, you may wake up at two in the morning and be freaking out. Um, I don't know why everything happens at two in the morning, but it seems like that's where it happens. So <laughs> they're cozy. We, yeah, I mean, swags come in, and this is a single, they make come in a double, which is even wider. So you can, you can get big. Uh, they just pack into a big old duffel that you just throw on the roof rack or in the back of the truck. Duffel's also canvas, so you can be out in the rain and the gunk and doesn't care. Yeah, swag's a good, good way to sleep. Good way to sleep. Um, not so great with the family. Unless you really like sleeping that close with your entire family. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, a double swag, if it's you and the pup, you know, yeah, great way to sleep with the dog. Um, a double swag is pretty dang cozy for two adults. You gotta really like that other person if you wanna sleep <laughs> together in a double swag. Uh, it depends on how you sleep though. Um, you know, again, it's, it's about your comfort level and trying to, trying to mimic what you do at home. Um, so you're as comfortable as possible to get the best night's sleep. So yeah, ground tent. Um, if you're gonna ground tent, um, another thing to consider here in the Northwest is, is rain. Sleeping on the ground, something that can happen is you can wake up in the middle of the night to a nasty rainstorm and your tent has now turned into a river. And your air mattress that you have, you're now floating and bobbing in the river. And that can be kind of fun, right? It's like you're on a waterbed. You guys remember water beds back in the 80s? That was the thing. Uh, you get seasick every time you go to sleep. So <clears throat> when you're ground tenting, a, a good little trick is, one, just kind of read the terrain that you're in. Uh, make sure you're on high ground, right? So if it does start raining, the water's not gonna channel into your tent, it's gonna channel around your tent. So you could, uh, if there's no high ground for you to, to camp in, honestly, just take a little shovel and dig a little bit of a moat around your tent with, a, with, an, with an exit. Uh, that way, if it starts raining, that rain's not just cascading and flowing through your tent, it's going around your tent. So having a, having a ground tent can be done all year round, uh, but you just gotta be smart about it and um, you know, be thinking about where you're camping, thinking about the climate that you're, that you're camping in. With my family, uh, on some trips, we'll bring, um, you know, one of my favorites is uh, you know, one of these Oz tents that sets up in like two seconds. Uh, it's a great way to get a big tent set up quickly. Um, you know, it just pops up, we're in, we're done, and you just gotta find some, some ground uh, to, par uh, to camp on. Another thing though, um, a lot of ground tents require, you know, guy lines and ropes and stakes to kind of stay upright um, or to stay put. Um, so think about where you're camping. If you're camping out in the middle of Moab, uh, oftentimes there's, you're camping on rock and there's not a lot of places to drive a peg into the ground. So your tent setup may not work in, in that area. So think about that. And you can also get creative, you know, okay, I'm camping on rock. There's nothing but rocks around me. All right, I've got guy ropes. Why don't I just get a rock, another rock, tie the rope around that. And now that rock is my stake. So you can still get creative, make things work. Let's talk about rooftop tents. Another way to sleep. You can put a tent on the roof of the vehicle on a rack. Um, rooftop tents have their pros and cons. Uh, some of the obvious pros is I'm up off the ground, right? I don't have to stake anything in the ground. It just sort of 
my wherever I park is where my camp is. Um, so that can be kind of cool for whatever type of traveling you're doing. Uh, but if you're a traveler that likes to set up base camp and then maybe run out and play with the vehicle a little bit and come back to base camp, rooftop tent might not be a good choice because you got to tear down your tent before you can move with it because you can't be driving the trail with your tent opened up like that. That looks doesn't look cool um, and might get ripped off. Um, and there's different styles of rooftop tents, right? Um, you've got kind of a hard shell hybrid tent here. Um, outside, we set up a, a classic soft shell tent. We also set up another hard shell tent. Uh, all these tents have pros and cons for the style of camping that you're doing. So uh, a soft shell tent, they usually take a little bit more time to set up, but they have a lot more room and usually attachments and accessories that can kind of really expand out your livable space. So there's trade-offs. Hard shell tents tend to be much more minimalistic uh, and much more efficient in the setup time. So if you're someone that likes to kind of, you know, do more traditional touring where, where every morning you're packing up camp and you're heading out to the next spot, uh, a hard shell tent might be a better choice because it's just quick and easy and efficient to set up and tear down. But if you do like to go set up a base camp and you know you're just going to park and plop and, you know, go fishing or go mountain biking or hiking or sit and relax and do nothing, um, you know, a soft shell tent makes sense because, it's, again, it's big, roomy, takes a little bit more time to set up, but you got nothing but time, so think about that. But with rooftop tents, there's another consideration called weight. Um, it's a bit of weight on top of the vehicle. Um, it takes away from how much payload capacity you can have because that's part of it. It's also a giant thing that's on the roof of your vehicle that can affect your fuel economy, uh, affect some of the handling. So everything's going to be a bit of a trade-off. But it's nice because it's attached to the vehicle, frees up more space inside the vehicle so you don't have to have all your bedding and sleeping bags and everything in the truck. Uh, it's all in your tent. So rooftop tents, definitely a way to do it. Another good way, if, if you drive a pickup, uh, there's a lot of companies uh, nowadays. Um, back 10, 12 years ago, there weren't very many, but there's now a ton of companies that are making these pickup canopies that have a tent built into them. And that's super cool because with a pickup, the whole point of a pickup is you just got a big old bed of space that you can just do whatever with. You got a lot of utility with a pickup, but having that tent sort of built into the canopy is kind of cool. Then you just drop the tailgate, climb in through there, boom, I can stand up now inside my pickup bed, inside my tent that popped up, and I got all kinds of space. Uh, so a lot of these canopy campers and toppers um, really make a good way to, to travel and to camp with a pickup. And usually they're, they're much like a hard shell tent where it's just a couple latches and the whole dang thing pops up. They're gonna operate just like a canopy. Uh, some will be an insert, some will be a canopy. It just kind of depends on the brand that you go with, but most of them are kind of like a canopy style. Um, but you can also do just like a, like a four wheel pop-up camper where it's like an insert that goes in your pickup bed, right? And then you've got a, a full on camper back there. So there's just lots of ways you can go about doing that. Um, I like the canopy toppers because you still have full use of a pickup bed and you can still take it to the hardware store or the, you know, the, the yard to get some, you know, bark dust or whatever, gravel. Uh, and then, but your tent just kind of is built into the top of it. So another way to do it if you got a pickup something to think about. And I've seen guys and, uh, and folks just, you know, they'll build out kind of the inside. You can do some minim minim minimalistic cabinetry in there or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, you can make kind of a cool intricate setup if you like. There's just, it gives you options. Uh, pickups are nice because it's kind of a, just a blank canvas that you can really do a lot with. And the full size pickup market is, is uh, always been strong here in the States, but the the camping with a full size pickup is really exploding. So there's a lot of great options from, you know, dropping campers to these toppers, uh, to even just going with like a, just a bed rack and a tent like what we have out in the Tacoma out there. So pickups can do a lot, um, but don't feel bad if you don't have a pickup, you can still get a good night's sleep. Uh, another one is just, just the good old fashioned little camper trailer. Um, there's, you know, depending on the style of camping you like doing, you can drag a trailer behind you. There's lots of these companies making these exciting little compact off-road trailers um, that are sort of just a rolling galley and uh, storage boxes and stuff with a kitchen and the tent sits on top or whatever. There's all kinds of cool flavors of, of trailers that you could, uh, that you can go after nowadays, depending on the type of camping that you like doing. You know, do I want to just go out uh, to Christmas Valley and, 
and, and tow the quads in the trailer and just set up base camp and play? Uh, or, you know, do we want something that we can drag up to wherever we want uh, out in the middle of nowhere? You know, if you want to get up to Knot Creek Reservoir uh, with a trailer, uh, you know, what kind of trailer would you take? You'd probably want one of the, more of these all little off-road trailers that's tight, small, narrow, that you can squeak up these little narrow trails. So again, it's back to that kind of style of travel. Um, think of like, you know, the, like we mentioned before, the drop-in campers, right, that just go straight into the pickup. Another way you can do it. Um, or there's another style I want to mention too, and I call it sort of like the all-in-one. Think of like a, uh, like a sportsmobile, you know, like these uh, Ford, uh, what do they got, Econoline four-wheel drive vans, you know, like a van build out that's a four-wheel drive van that's all built out. We've all seen like the Mercedes Sprinters. So that's another great way to get a sort of all-in-one unit that's, you know, I'm not having to drag a trailer, but I still have sort of that camper comfort that uh, creature comforts that, that just make that camping experience more comfortable. Um, yeah, great way to do it. I, funny thing, I actually change up my sleeping arrangement depending on uh, who and how I'm traveling. Um, I, I, that really kind of determines my, my arrangement. Uh, if, it's, if it's me and, and the kids and the whole family, um, you know, rooftop tent for four people, that's a big old tent. And there's only a few handful of companies that make a tent that size. And, you know, I, I just have a forerunner, so it, it's not gonna fit. But if it's, if it's just me my, by myself uh, or, the, or two folks, you know, rooftop, most rooftop tents are, are two person capacity, so that makes it really easy. Uh, if I'm just solo out with the guys, I'll take my swag on a cot or just that, you know, it's just something that's really minimalistic and, and easy. Um, so it kind of depends on where you're going, what you're doing, um, you know, and, the, and the sort of the, the type of trip that you're doing. Um, but right, it makes sense, right? Depending on, uh, you know, if you know that you're just going camping out with the guys, right? It's just you and your friends uh, going out on a trip out in the middle of stinking nowhere, uh, you know, just focus on what's gonna make you the most comfortable. If you're going out as a family, Focus on what makes the family more comfortable or, or with your significant other or whatever, you know. It's, it's all about making sure that you guys are having a great night's sleep because that's part of that experience. That's that check in the box of nailed that one. That was fantastic. We almost sleep better now camping than we do at home. Like if you can get to that point, you've done, you've done well. Let's talk about heat. Um, it gets chilly at night. You could be out in the middle of the desert. It could be 90 degrees during the day. It could be 20 degrees at night. Uh, that's the fun of the desert, um, or just this time of year where it's just, who knows, wait five minutes. Um, there's a lot of cool ways to keep warm with whatever sleeping setup you may have. Let me start with the most basic and simple. Sleeping out on a cot or on the ground underneath the stars, I'll just build a nice little fire here, right? Just a nice, get some good coals going, and then um, maybe put some rocks in there. I can take those rocks and just kind of put them right next to my bed on the side that I'm not going to get out of, right? Because you don't want to get up at two in the morning and step on some hot rocks. That would wake you up. But you can take some hot rocks and just put them underneath. I'll even do that when I'm sitting around the campfire. I'll get some hot rocks going and I'll put them underneath my chair and you can actually feel those, the heat from those rocks coming up and toasting your buns. It's the best thing. Um, but yeah, you know, something like this, man, just a, just a good campfire. You know, nice and good coals. You don't need a big flame. You just need some good deep coals, that'll keep you warm. Uh, if you're sleeping in a tent, uh, there's ways you can go about it. Um, you can go with insulation. You can go with, um, there's a lot of these cool little heaters that can run off different types of fuel, uh, be it propane, be it diesel. Uh, you can run things off of, you know, you can get an electric blanket if you've got a, a nice inverter in the vehicle and just run off, you know, plug in an electric blanket. Great way to heat things up. People, there's a, if you go with a, any kind of combustion heater, uh, make, do make sure it has some kind of catalytic converter in there because you don't want to die of CO2 poisoning. That's not fun. You want to make sure that, again, that you've, you're, you're combusting things, right? So there, it's going to be, it in itself is going to be generating condensation. So make sure you have some extra breathability. Um, the other thing is you don't want to wake up at 2 in the morning with your tent on fire unless you're looking for some excitement at two in the morning, because then that could be exciting. But you, generally that's not a good thing. So, um, you know, like these little buddy heaters or like a nice diesel heater, um, there's, 
ways to go about it, but you just got to kind of be careful. But those things are great because you can really regulate the temperature. You can keep that ambient temperature in the tent at a nice comfortable level. Uh, that way you're not just freezing your tush off. Um, but just be wary that you are combusting. It will be generating condensation, especially if you're camping down by water because it's just naturally going to be really humid in the air. So uh, even out in the desert, if you're by water, it's going to be humid. So you're going to have condensation issues. So deal with that. Um, if you're doing a little bit more of a, like a build out, like some of these uh, pickup bed uh, toppers that we were talking about, um, there's a company called Truma that makes a really nice uh, propane heater. But what's cool is the combustion part happens everything on the outside and it's just blowing nice warm heated air inside. So you don't, you don't have to worry about condensation as much. Uh, you don't have to worry about dying of CO2 poisoning. Um, and you can still have a nice, toasty, warm, comfy evening, uh, even if it's sleeping in the back of your pickup. Uh, same thing with like these, some of these diesel heaters. They'll, they'll work where the combustion happens in an external unit and it's just, it's just got a blower that's blowing in uh, warm air. Most of the time, you're gonna be carrying propane anyway to cook with, most of the time. Um, unless you have a diesel truck, carrying around a diesel heater is kind of a pain because now you're carrying around a fuel that's only for that heater. Uh, and not for cooking, not for the truck, you know. Try to, think of, try to think of the fuel source that you're bringing and does it serve more than one purpose? I always like to try to double things up. So if you've got a diesel pickup, uh, a diesel heater actually makes some sense because you're running off diesel. Um, if you cook off of, a, off of propane, instead of those little green bottles, just get one of those, you know, they make propane tanks in every little size and shape get a refillable tank that you can also run a heater off of in the evening after you're you know, done cooking and going to bed. But think of, think of condensation if it's a combustible heater kind of way. Uh, back to that whole ventilation and breathability thing. Uh, be cognizant of uh, ventilation so you don't die of CO2 poisoning. Uh, and be cognizant of ventilation uh, so, well, and also placement so you don't turn your tent into a bonfire at two in the morning. Uh, yeah, that Truma heater is pretty sweet. Uh, they, it just plums off of propane. The heater it's so, unit it has to mount to something. So if you've got one of those canopy toppers, um, you can just mount to the side of that. It's got all the combustion happens on the outside. It's got its own vent for the combustion side of it. Just runs off of a propane tank and it's got a little electronic thermostat. So it needs a bit of 12 volt power, very little uh, for the blower. And um, you know the thermostat just does the work all night long. And then you're warm, you're cozy, you can set that, set the thermostat to whatever you want and you're good to go. There are ways to do it, you guys. There are ways to do it and be super comfortable. Um, I'm gonna hang around afterwards. If you guys wanna talk one-on-one -on -one about a particular setup consideration, you're thinking about your vehicle or the type of traveling you wanna do, happy to stick around and answer those questions. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for coming out. That's all I had tonight. Thank you very much, appreciate you guys.